guys, damn minigun bringing you, well, finally bringing you the Battlefield 1 LMG tier list that I've been promising for well over a month now. Reason I have not been able to make it in a timely fashion is that, well, I had to record it so many times, it just, the audio just wouldn't work. But regardless, now it has, so let's get right into it. Now before we start, uh, it's good to say that Battlefield 1 is actually a very well balanced game, especially when it comes to its LMG selection. If we take a look at the class system, well, I'll be using tierlistmaker.com, which is a very good website of doing this sort of stuff. I'm just gonna grade it from S being the best, as in the class, let's actually, let's just look at the class tiers. When we're speaking about an S tier gun, it means that it does pretty much most things correctly, especially things that matter the most. For example, let's say, for the sake of argument, there's a gun that does the 0 to 60 meter range bracket, which is extremely common, extremely well, and doesn't have overly obvious flaws. It doesn't mean that it invalidates other guns necessarily. There will be a few of those, but I promise you they won't be very common. But they will certainly be class leaders in some instances, for example, I don't know, if I think of the Hewitt for example, which may not necessarily be S-class, we'll see if it is later. It has the best sustained accuracy of any LMG and indeed any automatic weapon in Battlefield 1. Heck, I think it's one of the most accurate automatic guns in Battlefield in general. If you forget the fact that Battlefield 3 barely has any spread or recoil, Battlefield 4 you basically can abuse the recoil and spread away with microbursting, but that's besides the point. A-class is just a step below S-class, they're usually very good weapons, they do most, well, as you can see written on the screen, they, they're great at most situations, really. But they may not have as many qualities which I would call best in class. They may have a good collection, and or rather some qualities which are best in class, but they don't have enough of them, or if they do, they're not necessarily the most important qualities to be best in class. BTR guns, which are still very effective, very powerful. I wouldn't call them all-rounders like C, which, uh, well, since we've mentioned C tier, C tier is basically just weapons which are good. They're usually very effective in lobbies where there aren't very high skill players, like average players. A uh, weapon that would fall under this category just offhand is probably a DMG-15, or at least some of the variants of it. It just doesn't do anything particularly well, it doesn't do anything super bad anyway, but it's decent. BTR is a bit... Uh, it's a step above that. For example, well, I need to stop saying example because it will ruin the list, but... It may do one or two things extremely well, but it has quite a few disadvantages. With D tier we have weapons which are still competent, they can still do well, especially in the hands of a skilled player, but their benefits generally are outweighed by their negative qualities. Often it's actually not the case that they have negative qualities per se, they just have weapons, well, there exist weapons which are just better. When I say weapons I'm actually referring to all variants, because some variants are just better than others and some are actually much worse than the base gun. With F tier, uh, well, they're just useless in terms of a gameplay niche, as you can see written there, they just don't really have a place, they don't do anything. Well, again, you can still do well with these weapons, because, as I said at the beginning of the video, there aren't any weapons which are bad, per se, in Battlefield 1. I will say that the F tier doesn't exactly contain an entire weapon, by this I mean it just includes a variant of a weapon which is just useless. And there won't be many of these. Well, you'll see when we get to it. So, without further ado, let's start adding stuff to the list. The first one on the list is actually a community favorite, or I guess you could say it used to be a community favorite because everyone used to run this gun on this particular variant, the BAR Storm. But ever since the LMG08 took over, or well, was released, it kind of took over the Storm's place. I don't really agree with this mentality, but I can see why people prefer the LMG-08. We'll be talking about that later, obviously. But with the, regard to BIR Storm, it was actually, funny enough, we start off with an S-tier gun. It's definitely S-tier. The reason being that the only, dis well, the only disadvantage this gun has is this 20-round magazine, which honestly isn't that big of a deal, because you can still kill like two or three enemies with it. 
And it doesn't reload slowly at all. It's like a 2.4 second reload. A bit more empty. It doesn't matter that much, honestly. Especially if you just switch to your Bulldog side. Which I will always recommend, by the way. It just does the 0 to, let's say, 50-60 meter range quite well. Or let's say 50 meter. It's decent at tap firing too, but unlike some other guns, it actually has a base spread of 0 0.24, which makes its tap firing at long range a little less effective, especially seeing that it's a storm variant and not a low wave variant, meaning that essentially your tap firing will be slower than any other low weight variant, really. It's somewhat mitigated by the fact that it actually fires pretty quickly, which is another uh, positive trait of the weapon. At 600 RPM, it's a very well balanced weapon tending more to the rate, higher rate of fire spectrum in terms of BF1 guns. Oh yes, the BR Storm, oh yeah, and I forgot the BR Storm actually has very good moving accuracy, which is typical of a few guns. It's actually, uh, if you ignore the Burton Optical, it's actually the best in its class, tied with the Madsen, the Show Show, I believe. Moving on, we also have the BR Trench. Now, this, again, is another S-tier weapon. It's... Really simple. Um, basically, the storm just reduces some of the horizontal recoil, not enough to make a huge difference in my opinion, but it does reduce more so the vertical recoil, which can be pro problematic for some people, especially on console. The trench BAR actually has quite pronounced vertical recoil, I think at 0.55, which is actually the highest in the class, tied with the show show, but the show show actually has a lower rate of fire, so it's not as bad. Uh, regardless, the Trench variant, it's, it's, similar, it's similar to the Storm variant, but in my opinion, it's the variant I prefer personally because it has an even more pronounced niche. That being that you can avoid the LMG's quite long ADS time, which is a feature of any LMG and is what keeps them balanced after time to kill 2.0. The great thing about the Trench variant is, since it has fantastic hip fire, you can easily compete with many SMGs up close. You can also, well, if you get gassed, you can just put your gas mask on with no problems, really. You'll be able to hip fire extremely well. And if you're prone, which is a more common situation than you might think, you can actually prone hip fire extremely, extremely accurate with this gun. Now, the... BAR telescopic variant is where we take it down a bit. Um, not sure if it's A or B tier, if I'm being completely honest. I think it's more of a B tier gun because, well, the strength of the BAR in general is its run and gun capability. Well, I shouldn't say run and gun because you still need to be tactical with LMGs because you just do not have the fast ADS time. Unless you're running something like a trench LMG, which is why I put the BARs up so high, I mean the trench variant. The problem with the telescopic is that it does have an interesting niche, which is why it earns a B tier spot at least. But the fact that you take so long to ADS with it because of the telescopic side, well, if you want to go full telescopic, there are better guns that do that, even though they may not have the rate of fire to. Well, they don't have the rate of fire to match the BAR, but. Honestly, that's not all that matters. And even on the bipod, the horizontal recoil and the telescopic is still relatively high. I can see people doing very well with it. I've seen many people running 100 stars with these things. Remember, B tier does not mean they are bad. Far from it, actually. They have a specific niche. But I think the other variants uh, match up the BAR's actual gameplay niche far better than this telescopic just because of that slow ADS time. And you don't really get much of the telescopic except, well, lower base spread, so we can therefore at long range, but the BR still has significant vertical recoil, which is another problem with the telescopic sight. If you're not bipoded, the vertical recoil would really mess you up, because when you have a very high rate of fire, well, high rate of fire, and a very high vertical recoil with a telescopic scope, and ideally you're firing in full auto in most situations, that's a very big problem. But regardless, it's still it's still pretty functional. Uh, well, it's beyond functional. It's actually really good if you know how to use it. But personally, I would avoid it in light of more specific weapons that can do telescopic uh, play better. Like for example, the Benet telescopic, which will be actually speaking up speaking about very soon. Well, since I've mentioned the Benet telescopic, let's start with that one. Uh, the Benet telescopic. It's definitely not great at most situations. 
but it's great at specific situations, much like the BR telescopic. Now, I may have contradicted myself, but hear me out. The thing with the Benet telescopic is it does a specific situation better than the BR telescopic. That is very long range combat, like anti sniping roads, where it works perfectly. But of course, it trades that for a very low DPS. It doesn't have, uh, well, doesn't have brilliant time to till min spread, which is an important factor on LMGs, which means how long it takes in full auto to get to max accuracy again. And it's only really effective, one, if you're tap firing, and two, if you're bipoded with it. That said, unlike something like the, well, the MG1917 telescopic, which I mistakenly labeled as suppressive here, so my bad with that. Um, it's still a more mobile, more practical option than that, so... Especially with its fast reload, you don't really need 250 rounds, to be honest, in most situations. Uh, so the Benet Telescopic is actually... It's your go-to for very long-range maps like Sinai, or even just long-range in general. It's fantastic at defending, and it can mess up most enemies at long-range without any problem. Just don't run around with it too much, but in a pinch, even its hip far may be somewhat competent compared to heavier options. Moving on to the Benet Telescope, or rather the Benet Optical. Um, this is also a case where I feel it's... It may be B or A tier, but I think I would go with B tier, simply because it has quite a few limitations. Now, a caveat with Optical Variants, although their stats often help the gun quite a lot, the fact that it has an optical sight means that it's subject to very significant visual recoil. There are actually very few weapons that actually don't suffer from this. But it is so pronounced that I just have to mention, because whatever your playstyle is, however you aim or whatever, visual recoil will always make it more confusing, unless you're one of those people who use, like, they, they tape their monitor or something for a central dot, which... I'm not a b the biggest fan of, because one, you're dissociating the, the recoil from the actual weapon, and two, it, I, don't, I don't personally like relying on third-party solutions like that, I much prefer just relying on the game. But whatever, like, the, the advantage of the optical, even though it does not have the, uh, the bipod that the telescopic offers, which somewhat limits its long-range potential, is that it's actually quite good at tap firing because of the... that the... mostly because the sight really helps it in single fire mode. Not so much in... in, in, uh, in automatic fire. It also gives it quite competitive moving spread because of the optical variant, which lowers the optical... I mean, lowers the moving spread quite a bit from the base variant, which isn't too terrible to begin with. It's also a pretty damn accurate gun, even though the time to limit spread is still not that great. Another advantage, which isn't inherent to the optical, but I think it makes use of it quite well, is that if you're strafing left and right and then firing at long range, the Benet's, well, the Benet telescopic, well, the, just the Benet Merci, has a very, very good projectile with very low drag, and it will always, always be a 5 hit kill, that doesn't matter where you hit the enemy in. Not all LMGs actually have this feature. Actually, none of them have the low drag that the Benet, the BAR, and the LMG, or rather the MG1917 have. So yes, if you want a sort of mix between long-range proficiency and uh, medium-range strafing combat, I would recommend the Benet Optical. But only if you can somewhat manage the visual recoil, which you cannot really manage, it's, it's either you tolerate it or not. And then we have the Benet Mercy Storm. Now, this is actually quite a few uh, classes down. This is actually the, our first D tier gun. The problem is, it's not a terrible weapon, not at all. It actually feels very fun to shoot and it's actually pretty damn accurate. The problem with it is, it still has a quite a high base spread for a weapon that's supposedly good at long range. I think it's about 0.21 and it's quite noticeable. It's not as bad as the BR, but it's not as good as something like the Hewitt or the Optical or the Telescopic Benet, especially not those, actually. It... The only advantage it has is, it, well, it has an eye inside, so it, it ADS is faster than the rest, and uh, it actually has very, 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 very low horizontal and vertical recoil, or rather horizontal recoil, because the vertical recoil is actually something like the Hewitt is better. And more importantly, you still have that very slow 
time to min spread. So you end up with a weapon which, eh, honestly, if you want a gun like that, just either take the other variants, especially the optical, since the telescopic is more designed for just being very good at that one thing, which is taking out long range snipers, which is very, very effective in many instances, such as on C9 or whatever. Not so much on close range max, obviously, but it's still B tier in my book. But this storm variant, it just doesn't offer anything that special. Like, if you want a mobile gun like that, even even the lowest gun is honestly better. It may it may not have the projectile or even the horizontal recoil to back it up to back it up, but it's just more practical. And if you want to go further than that, just take the Hewitt, which is honestly just overall a flat upgrade, unless you consider the projectile. So yeah, that's not a very good gun. Like. Okay, it's a good gun, but it's not that useful, that's my point. Like, you can still- I have a video where I went like 40 and 0 with, with, with the gun. But, again, that's circumstance. It doesn't mean that other guns are not very suited to the task. Moving on, it is actually one of the more controversial weapons, I feel. The Burton LMR. Let's start with the optical version. Uh, yeah, the Burton LMR is an easy B. It's not an A, especially not- it's certainly not an A. Now the Burton is very, very, very interesting because when it was released, many people said it was overpowered, and then no one ever used it again. Like the only re the only place where I see the Burton used like frequently is people shooting down planes with it, which I will not factor into this comparison because this is more about its actual infantry performance. That's just a nice alter the fire mode, but it actually adds nothing to the infantry experience. Anyway, the problem, well, let's start with the strengths. Now, the Burton has a very obvious strength. It fires extremely, extremely fast at 830 RPM. It does not have a 4-hit kill, but it has quite an extensive 5-hit kill range. I think it's, I'm, not, I'm actually forgetting right now, but I think it's around 22 meters where that finally drops up. Which actually makes it the deadliest automatic weapon, period, like between the 12 and 22 meter mark. It matches the Parabellum in practical terms at close range, which I think actually exceeds it because the hip fire it is much better and the horizontal well the horizontal vehicle doesn't matter at close range, but still it's a more stable weapon platform. The problems with the Burton start is that, like I said, it does not have a four hit kill. And it has a 20 round magazine, which means you have significantly less it actually has the least kills per mag potential of any LMG. Added to that, you still have pretty substantial horizontal and even vertical recoil, and when you have to land more shots, that means that more shots will be exposed to said recoil. Another deficiency of the Burton is that it has an uncharacteristically extremely low muzzle velocity, basically matching that of the Ribay rolls, which is very strange for an LMG, it's like 520 meters per second or so. This makes hitting distant targets even in single fire pretty damn difficult. It's even very noticeable when using the fire or other incendiary bullets to take out even something huge like an L-class Zeppelin from even, even like, let's say, 100 meters. Sometimes the bullets, it, it feels like you're not actually hitting anything, but it's just because the bullets fall off so quickly that they're not even hitting it. Which is very funny, actually. Now, the optical version... Well, let's talk about the trench version first, and then we'll come back to it. The trench version, in my opinion, is the easier weapon to use of the bunch, even though it has higher horizontal recoil than the optical. But since it has hip fire, it actually fulfills a very powerful niche when it comes to just hip firing. It's, it's kind of like the automatic of the assault class or the support class, but with a little bit well less DPS up close than the automatic o. And it's it takes longer to reel on its hip fire is still not as good as the automatic in reality. You can burst fire at long range with it, like you could do with the automatic. But um, its five hit kill is actually quite extensive. It you can actually beat pretty much any gun if you actually hit your shots. The optical version is perhaps the more strategic variant. Because you need to, it actually has a slower ADS time, so it's over the trench. But as a counterweight to that, you get less horizontal recoil, which means uh, it kind of turns into the auto auto loading 35. It's kind of a skill cannon, actually. It's quite difficult to land shots, and since it actually fires pretty quickly, it's not unreasonable to burst fire with it, even especially since it doesn't actually have a very bad. The time to the mince, but it's not, not at all actually since it fires so quickly and it's just naturally fairly low. 
So yes, Burton is kind of a skill can. And it's it's a bit weird because you can easily get like a cheap kill with it, and that's why some people don't appreciate getting killed by it. But actually, it's actually a pretty damn difficult gun to use overall. But it has a very 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 powerful ability just to outshoot everything up to 22 meters, and it has decent accuracy to back it up at that range. Just to sum up the Burton, it's just not a weapon I would recommend to new players, absolutely not. Like, you can say, oh, the trench Burton is very easy to get kills with it. Yes, but just getting one, two, three kills and then getting killed because you're hiding in a corner because you just cannot manage the weapon's kill, kill per mag capacity or its recall or its uh, spread or just its slow muscle velocity, that's not really playing well. Like, it would be much better if you're just using the BAR trench for that. Or even the BR Storm. Moving on, uh, we have the Burton Storm, which doesn't exist, so we will ignore that. We have my one of my personal favorites. I actually have 100 stars on this gun, just to just to show that I have a bit of bias towards it. But is it S tier? No, it's A tier. The it's an extremely effective weapon, especially if you're experienced with the game. Like, if you're a pro at the game, well, I say pro, like, if you're good at the game, if you understand the weapon mechanics, if you understand how other classes react, if you understand almost everything about the game, the Shoshra is easily one of the best guns you can pick. It would easily rank S tier in your personalness, but looking at it from a holistic lens, just zooming out a bit, the Shoshra has some deficiencies, but it does so many things well that it at least earns an A, a tier. It does have a class leader capability because it actually has the, I believe, outside the Burton, it actually has the best DPS of any automatic weapon between the 12 and 20 meter mark because automatic weapons drop off their, what do you call it, the max damage at 12 meters, so, and none of those can actually match the theoretical DPS provided by the Shoujo. The Shoujo's interesting feature is it's kind of a hybrid between an LMG and a Stellar. It actually can tap far extremely well, this is where the skill uh, requirement comes in. If you actually know how to tap fire this at the correct rate of fire at most ranges, you basically have an LMG and a DMR, or a self-loading rifle or whatever. It's really, really powerful. It actually even has pretty good hip fire, even though it may be tricky to understand because the social fire is extremely, extremely slow, so your target saturation is much lower than other guns, meaning it's less forgiving. This even applies to ADS, if you miss a shot, your DPS will plummet severely much more than many other weapons. Well, most of the guns which like are around the 600 RPM mark, or even something like the Matson, they, just, they're just more forgiving. However, if you master this gun, it is honestly one of the best LMGs you can pick. It does well in pretty much all situations, except situations like, for example, you're on C9, there's a sniper in the distance. The show shows pretty. It's not bad. It's just not great. Uh, base ADS spread, which is the same as the BAR, actually affects it quite a bit. So you'll be missing if you're very at very long range. But another good thing about the tap for potential is since it basically has a damage model of the, well, it has a nerfed Che Rigotti damage model, or rather auto loading turret 25. You can actually mentally calculate how many shots an enemy needs to be taken down very easily on the fly. Because it's, you only need to think about I need to land 3 or 4 shots. The 3 shot extends to 20 meters, which is a very common range, and everything else is 4 shots. So it's very, very easy to understand, and headshots can actually lower that quite a bit. In fact, I believe you can actually 2 hit kill if you just land a headshot at close range and follow it up with a body shot, though I'm actually not sure because. Honestly, I don't really go for headshots that much with uh, the show show purely because it feels very awkward. I don't know, I can't really explain, it just feels awkward to me. Like, Not like on the Hewitt where I actually actively go for headshots, mostly because of its easy, very easy recall patterns and spread characteristics. Now the show show telescopic is one I would honestly not recommend, it's actually a D tier weapon. Because you used, you actually lose that um, ability to tap for quickly because it recovers from recoil and spread slower than the low weight variant as any LMG or any other weapon would. 
and it just doesn't gel well with the scope, honestly. Uh, um, you have a weapon that actually has pretty... Well, it actually has very high vertical recoil, and the horizontal recoil is okay. It's not bad, it's not great, it's just straight in the middle, especially considering it's DPS, which is pretty reasonable. But at long range, you will not be making use of the telescopic's ability to well, pick off snipers at long range because of its better better uh, base spread, which is a significant improvement. Just use another weapon for that. Even just take the take the benet. Even honestly, I think it's just better to try our chance with the low weight and tap for at long range. Just all you need to do is just close the distance just a little bit, and you'll be able to tap for quite well with the low weight. 0.24 ADS base spread may sound high, but it's still you. You can still hit targets like 80, 90 meters away very reliably, and it's just offhand. But I've seen it in my own play. It's it's not that difficult, even if you one of those shots strays off target. So no, I don't recommend the telescopic, it doesn't really offer anything, except fun factor, it's actually really fun to use this weapon because it's very satisfying just to land Shao Shao bullets at long range. I can't really explain why, it's just very fun, so I would recommend it for that and that alone. Now, moving on to the weapon I probably have the most bias towards. And you know what this is, it's the... King or Queen, whatever your preference, of spreadless action is the Hewitt. The Hewitt Lowway. This is an automatic S tier, not because I like it, but partly. But the Hewitt actually has a very, very, very important thing that is actually complained by many, rather incorrectly, I would say, people who play BF1, which it has. They say that it has an aggressive spread model, which isn't actually true. They what they mean to say is that there's no way to abuse that, abuse like a simple mechanic to make everything spreadless like BF4. But again, that's besides the point. I think this is the second time I've mentioned that. But anyway, the advantage of the Hewitt is the only real disadvantage the Hewitt has is that it's somewhat slow rate of fire, true, and it's empty reload is slow, I guess. But that's easily mitigated by a pretty snappy. Tactical reload, you just need to learn that, it's not it's not a big deal. 26 rounds may sound like a little, but it's honestly not. Especially when all those rounds are connecting, unlike many other LMGs. Like, the Hewitt's ability just to consistently hit the target at any, ra at any range. You can burst fire and it will hit, you can full auto, full auto it and it will hit. The only targets it won't hit are like extremely long range snipers, because the horizontal recoil will actually deflects all of the shots even though it has very very little of it it's actually i think the only it's actually the best in class outside the bene storm but like i said the bene storm doesn't actually have the uh, the spread mechanics to back it up unlike the hewitt as if that wasn't enough the hewitt actually has the best moving hip fire accuracy not necessarily base spread like the base hip fire accuracy on some like something on the br trench which means it's more accurate, but it is so consistent that you can strafe around with it. And I've actually beaten weapons like the Parabell on just strafing hip fire with the the, hip, the Hewitt, which is very impressive. I do it very often, actually, even against good players, much less average players. So I would recommend that, though I would still prefer switching to like something like a Bulldog, which is just a better option because you will be able to, to hit anyone with an insane DPS with that gun. It also has pretty decent moving accuracy, not the best, certainly not something like the BR, but I think the spread and recoil statistics somewhat bridge that gap, because the BR actually has quite significant recoil, even the Storm version. There's really not much wrong with the Hewitt, unlike, unless you just really want a bigger magazine, or you just want something with a very high rate of fire, which... Rate of fire is not everything. If, you're all, if all your shots are hitting on the Hewitt, and none of your shots are hitting on the Parabellum, the Hewitt will just outshoot you, always. Just as simple as that, except like maybe outside, like just spitting just because I've mentioned the problem. The problem is actually all of them is actually the most inaccurate gun in the whole game when you're firing full auto by a lot. So yeah, not much to say about the Hewitt low aid. It's just great in almost every situation. If you go for headshots, you learn how to headshot with this weapon. It's borderline overpowered in my opinion because it just doesn't have any spread or recoil. So yes. Pick this gun, you will not regret it. And many people actually are starting to realize that it's very effective because I see it very often now. Moving on to its less than stellar uh, variant, the optical. 
Now the Optical actually has quite a few advantages over the lower 8, mostly an even lower horizontal recoil, if you can believe that, which is actually very noticeable. And an extremely, extremely, extremely low base spread of 0 0.135 versus the lowest 0 0.1a, which means it can tap for at any range you can think of, really. It also has better moving accuracy, but it somewhat loses to the low weight. One, because you cannot tap fire as quickly if you can, as you can on the low weight. For example, despite its very low horizontal, it's got very long ranges, it's actually a good idea to tap fire, like single shot. The You would just to be more consistent, even just as a mental thing, it, uh, you will feel more consistent. But the optical has the same problem I have with many other optical variants, and the Hewitt for some reason, the Hewitt optical especially, suffers a lot from it. You have a gun that barely has any recoil to speak of, but the optical side just bounces everywhere and it makes it almost unusable at times. So considering that major disadvantage but the other very stellar qualities, uh, I didn't mention the slower ADS time which can matter but that's implicit in any of the optical variants. It's simply that the low weight Hewitt is just the better option since it's an S tier weapon. That doesn't mean the Hewitt Optical has no purpose, it's actually quite good statistically. And were it not for its horrible optical bounce, I think I would gladly rate it as an A tier weapon at the very least. But I have difficulty recommending this variant myself, but at the same time I cannot agree. I cannot ignore its very effective statistics, especially since I also rank the Benet Optical as a B tier weapon, which kind of has similar qualities to it. Uh, like the Hewitt Optical is a bit better overall, whereas the Benet Optical, by the way, these are both um, defensive is not the right term, but they're not guns you're going to run around with and do well with. You can get away with being reactive on the Hewitt a bit more, but still. They offer similar playstyles. They are simply a bit more responsive, well, significantly more responsive. Whereas the Benet, well, you get a much better projectile, which means very long range targets will be easier to kill, assuming you are tap firing, for example. Moving on, we'll be taking a look at the. What's it called? Oh, of course, the Lewis Gun Low Weight. Now, the Lewis Gun Low Weight is the first weapon you'll have. Whenever you start playing BF1, I'm pretty sure by if you're watching this video, you have played the game. And well, uh, hmm. I believe the Lewis gun is an easy A tier because of many factors actually. One, you have a capacious 47 round magazine on the low weight and optical versions, and 97 the suppressive, but we'll speak about the low weight mostly for now. It has 47 rounds, it reloads quickly, it has very low. Vertical Rico, which, is, which makes it very new player friendly, and even uh, even experienced players. With LMGs, you're firing in full auto, so there isn't much you can do to avoid the Vertical Rico, except, you know, control it, which is possible, but having less of it is always better, especially as range increases and those targets start to become small. Its horizontal recoil is also on the low side, considering its pairing of decent fire rate, not too fast, not too slow. Uh, the very capacious magazine, the very low vertical recoil, it's much, much, much more controllable than something than the MG-15. Though, to compensate for that, the Lewis uses the Hewitt's projectiles, whereas the Perinos were. You will be needing to hit body shots at 50 meters to get the full 5 hit kill. But really, with a weapon that is reasonably accurate like this, especially vertical recoil-wise, that's not too difficult. It's also surprisingly effective in hip fire. I think just because it has just decent base hip fire spread to begin with, and it doesn't take too long to become accurate. In essence, the lowest gun is like a more well-rounded Hewitt. It's not as powerful as the Hewitt overall, even though you can kill more people per mag, which is actually another positive quality of the Lewis gun. It doesn't overheat, which is very nice on a weapon that essentially has 50 rounds. It's pretty much effective in most situations, and on top of that, it's not simply an all-rounder gun. It actually does quite a few things very well, like the aforementioned very fast, or rather very slow overhead compared to the magazine, the fast reloading big magazine, the very low vertical recoil, the low ish spread move, spread increase per shot, rather it takes doesn't take too long to become accurate again. It's just a very solid, well-rounded weapon that can do great at most situations, which is what an A-tier gun should do. 
and excels in many areas, but is not necessarily top tier like the well, the Hewitt and the BAR variants, which I mentioned earlier. With the Optical Lewis, it's a very similar story. I think I would easily rank it as A as well. You trade in the bipod for better horizontal recoil, which is actually very noticeable on this gun. And unlike almost all other optical variants, there is almost no optical bounce on this one. I do not know why, but it just doesn't happen. It also has quite nice moving accuracy, which is which pairs quite nicely with a weapon that's designed to fire in full auto, and well, you can strafe around with it now. Not that you couldn't do that with the low way, but you can do it a bit more efficiently with the optical. Then there's the suppressive Lewis gun, which, in my opinion, is another A tier weapon. It's actually a little bit different from the other variants because it has 97 rounds and it can technically overheat at 50 rounds, though that's still quite a generous amount. But you get a gun that reloads extremely quickly with 97 rounds to spare. It also has the same uh, recoil pattern as the low wave variant, though it doesn't recover as from spread as quickly and the telescopic scope may exaggerate the vertical recoil especially. However, on the suppressive Lewis, because the Lewis naturally has very low vertical recoil, and I found myself being in the position of being aggressive with this gun, even while it's moving. It's actually very effective if you take it like into a Monte Grappa bunker and keep firing, so you can clear the like, basic suppressive fire, which is what the variant is called, moving suppressive fire. So yes, fine enough, all the Lewis gun variants are easily A tier, for the reasons I've mentioned. You've got a very solid weapon, very dependable, it does everything well, and it excels in quite a few areas, which vary from variant to variant. Moving on, we have the Matson. Now the Matson is interesting. You've got a, another fairly well-rounded weapon, but more geared towards the aggressive side of play. You've got a good projectile, very high muzzle velocity, very fast reload. It's actually fast as reloading LMG, though not by a huge margin. And it has a pretty standard, well, sta well I guess you could call it average 30 round magazine, which is pretty good. Uh, it has very good moving accuracy stats, identical to the BAR, but it also counts with a bipod, unlike the BAR. Also, some of you might be thinking about the BAR M1982. I didn't cover that weapon because I just didn't cover it in, in complete honesty, and I don't think many people actually have access to that gun or even want to use it. So I'll be ignoring that. Maybe I'll, I'll mention it in a, like an extra video or something. But regardless, I think the Matson stutters the line between B and C tier. It doesn't do things well enough. Like I wouldn't pick the low weight, especially the low weight variant, over like the BAR Storm or the Trench. Or keep in mind this list, although I'm basing it on some objective fact, it's a bit of my personal preference. Also, I'm not mentioned. I'm not going to factor in the huge magazine on the way, which many people complain about. Rightfully so, but you can learn to get used to that. Unlike the other Matson variants, obviously it comes with a bipod, so. There's that added uh, dependability, or rather versatility. If you want an aggressive LMG with a bipod, it's actually quite a good option to go with, since it fires quicker than the Lewis gun, I think it's 5.4 RPM. It's basically kind of a heavier MP18. If you can manage, like, for example, the magazine on the Trench variant BAR, or Storm variant BAR, or even the Show Show or Lewis gun, I think you're better off with that weapon. However, there is a big difference between the Madsen Storm and the Madsen Low Weight. You're going to be surprised where I'm going to put this weapon now. The Madsen Storm is actually an S-tier gun. I've actually recently discovered why this is. The Madsen Storm reduces the horizontal recoil so much, which wasn't that bad, but wasn't so brilliant on the original Madsen, and combines it with a very effective... Well, you can strafe around to where heart's content with this gun and you'll still be quite accurate. And since LMGs get more accurate the longer you fire, the 30 round magazine is a noticeable improvement over like the BAR Storm. You, you lose some of that DPS, sure, that's true, but it's actually a more accurate open platform paired with um, a much better magazine size. I've seen people do crazy killstreaks with this gun. And since I started using it, I was extremely impressed. Just keep in mind to use the AA sights, I know many of you already do that. I'm actually not a huge fan of them on all weapons, but since the Madsen, especially if you're going to strafe or be strafing around, has pretty obstructive iron sights, especially with that magazine, you might want to pick the AA sight even, even though you may not like them usually. Another S tier gun is the Madsen Trench. 
it basically has the same stats as the low weight, but the fact, again, you have a 30 round magazine, the and the LMGs get more accurate even even during hip fire when during sustained fire. A 30 round magazine with that level of hip fire is extremely impressive and extremely useful in many situations. Like if you take this gun on a mien or like in a close quarter situation, you're basically taking a heavy SMG at that point. You're not going to get the microburst potential of something like the MP18 trench or even the automatic trench if you can do it well. But it's an amazing option, especially if you're getting bombarded by gas grenades. That even the trench bear may not necessarily fill because of its limited magazine size. You can basically walk, fire, hip fire this thing down the Amien corridor, which is pretty freaking amazing. Now, the definite community favorite, without a shadow of a doubt, is the LMG08 Low Weight. Now, I'm tempted of. Well, is it STR? No, it's definitely not STR. Many of you probably use this weapon. It's, it's definitely very effective, or at least it's perceived to be very effective. And it is actually very effective. It's either an A or a B tier weapon. I think I would tend towards A, even though I, I don't personally use it all that much. Uh, the biggest reason why I don't use it that much is, yes, you get a very nice 100 round magazine, but I tend to choose my fights well, and I also tend to play smaller game modes, like Frontlines. Which, while well, can, it can be very chaotic, don't get me wrong, like a Monte Grappa on front, it can be extremely chaotic. But uh, the horizontal recall and the less than stellar movement accuracy, not to mention a 600 RPM with a pretty uh, fast overheat time, like 35 shot, which isn't all that good. It's not the most consistent weapon ever. Though, I will say, it's uh, one of the rare examples where I will really weigh in the powerful ability, well, the very clear iron side it has. It actually can tap for extremely well since it's a low weight variant with a very good projectile. Uh, I think it's the 870 meters per second um, with normal drag. Not as great as the, uh, what's it called, the Bene Mercy, but it's still very, very good. And it's undoubtedly very destructive at close range, even though it doesn't have brilliant hip fire. If you're spitting distance at an enemy, it doesn't really matter if you have very good hip fire. Uh, the sheer target saturation of this weapon will pretty much shred most enemies up close. And if you are on a good flank, especially, you may very well take out the entire or rather half the enemy team if you're playing something like Frontline. So, yeah, the LMG08, not my favorite, but it's definitely an A tier weapon. Uh, now for the LMG08 suppressive. Now this it is very weird because you basically double the firepower potential of the low weight, but it's either a C or a D tier for me, simply because if you pair a weapon with so high of a horizontal rig, I think it's like 0.5 to 5 to each side, which is the second worst. It's like almost two and a half BARs type to tape together. Having a scope on it will make things very bad. Also another thing with the suppressive, yes you get 200 rounds, but if you reload that, the reload time on the suppressive version especially can be excruciatingly long, like it can be over 15 seconds if you're nearing the end of the magazine. You're better off just expanding all your magazine, but that means if you're like in a tight situation with 30 rounds, you will not be able to reload, and with such high horizontal recoil, you will be missing a lot of shots. And you do not want to get caught in close quarters with 30 rounds, because if you reload, you're going to rely on your cider, and your cider may be something like a bulldog, which is, well, very extremely powerful in my preference. If you're out of shots on that, you're pretty much screwed. And yeah, the, as I said, the scope on it just makes it borderline unusable. It gives me a headache. So, I know some people can make good use of it, but keep in mind it's also partly a personal tier list. I strongly believe that you're just better off with the low wave version. The 200 round, unless you're very specific situation, like, I don't know, if you're playing operations, I don't really play that very much, and you're in a bunker and you're just mowing down target after target after target from a bunker on defensive. But yeah, maybe that's that's a good place for it. But again, you can do that with the low rate. You don't, you don't, you don't, you really don't need 200 rounds. So let's move on to the MG15, a weapon that's actually quite rare to see today, or nowadays. I think it's easily a 
comfortably a C tier weapon. It doesn't do anything brilliantly. It's a competent weapon. It shares the same projectile as the LMG8. It's significantly more accurate than it though, it, though it has 500 RPM, not 600, which is a big difference. It's very good at tap firing, that's uh, something I noticed, so if you have you want a gun that has a large magazine, a better projectile than the Lewis, even though I consider the Lewis the better option overall, uh, it's an excellent weapon, uh, it's an excellent all-rounder weapon, which is what C tier is all about. It can do very very well if used, if used correctly, but especially if you're playing against good players or smaller modes, you may want to use, well, just use the Lewis gun, honestly. Uh, another good factor on it, uh, well, let's start with the bad one, it also overheats pretty quickly at 35 shots, the same as the LMG8, but you will not get there as quickly because the rate of fire is slower. And it also re reloads extremely fast for 100 round uh, LMG, I think it's only like 4.75 or, or even less, I think 4.25, which is actually faster than the Hewitt's empty reload, which is very, very, very impressive. You'll never be, that's the only, well, not the only, but the main strength of this weapon is that it'll be, you'll rarely get caught out. Moving on to a variant which I honestly do not see any point to, is the MG15 Storm. Now, it's almost, almost a useless weapon for me. Well, I think it does deserve the D, D tier just because the MG15 already has pretty solid stats to begin with. And I can see an argument being made for something, like if you want a Lewis Storm, for example, which doesn't exist, you may gravitate to this gun a little bit because of its low vertical reach. But yeah, actually no, because the Lewis gun, the Lewis gun, I'm arguing with myself now, the Lewis gun, all the Lewis gun variants have better vertical recoil than even the Storm uh, MG15, and the horizontal recoil isn't brilliant. So you're always better off using you're better off using the suppressive. Yeah, actually thinking about it, I think it deserves F tier because if you want a gun like that, unless you really hate the scope on the suppressive version, which you shouldn't really because it has no vertical recoil to speak of, so won't disturb it that much. And okay, yeah, in fairness, you uh, the lowest suppressive has a scope as well, so it doesn't. It takes longer to ADS, but still, it doesn't. It doesn't. There isn't really a place for the MG15 Storm, I don't think it's a useless, it's not a useful variant, but only just, I think it, there could be a case for it being D tier, but it's not brilliant, let's put it that way, it's not even what I would call good. Doesn't mean you can, not, doesn't mean you can't play well with it, like I said at the beginning, but there are simply better options. Now, other weapon that I, the other variant is also a very comfortable C tier, in my opinion. You have the typical disadvantage of the scope, slowing down the ADS time. The horizontal recoil is not brilliant, though, because at, I think at 0.4 left and right. But the bipod is actually enough on this weapon to make that a bit more manageable compared to, other, like, for example, the LMG08 suppress, I would never recommend you just because of the scope on something so. Recoil heavy like horizontal by horizontal recoil to those who do not know it's not like vertical recoil You can't just pull down on your mouth and control it. It's either you tap fire or you just pick your engagement distance Where the horizontal recoil won't matter that much or if you burst fire on the burst fire while you're bipoding You can't really go wrong with the suppressive version over the low weight. I would personally pick the low weight, but Having 200 rounds with okay-ish recoil and an extremely fast reload, unlike the MG08, is actually an asset that shouldn't be ignored. It's actually technically a class leader in that sense, but it's not that important, in my opinion. Okay, yeah, you have 200 rounds and you can reload quickly. But the low weight also has 100 rounds and reloads quickly too. The reload's so fast it doesn't matter if you have another 200 rounds. If you're continuously firing at 500 RPM, no less you're going to give your position anyway, and you will need to relocate, and while you relocate, you might as well reload. Moving on to another community favorite, is the MG1917 low weight. Now to me, this is a toss-up between B, actually, I think it's a C-tier weapon, despite its popularity. The problem with the LMG, I mean the MG1917 is, other than being on a bipod and being very effective at all range, well, not all range, like mostly medium to very long range, it's not a useful weapon. If you're running around with the low weight MG15, or I keep saying it in 50, the MG1917, 
you're just doing it wrong. It does nothing well. The only good thing is it has like it has 250 rounds. But just pick an LMG08 or the MG15 or the Lewis gun suppressor. They all reload much faster anyway. You never you're never going to hit the 250 round pressure. I I would wager that before you reload you won't even hit the 100 round belt. Just because it's fired so slowly. It's hip fire is terrible, it's moving accuracy is terrible. The only thing that redeems it is just it's a very good bipod weapon. But that brings me onto the suppressive version, which is honestly the better pick. And I would easily put it at B tier because it's excellent at a very specific situation. And that situation is basically being a turret. If you're bipolar with this weapon, not a lot of things can challenge you at long range, even just purely to the suppression effect, combined with extremely high accuracy. It actually has the lowest base spread of any LMG, like 0.12, though when you're dropping below like 0.15 ADS spread, it doesn't matter that much. But if you want the bipod meta, if you want to be bipolar or you want to defend, defend something, just take the suppressive, ignore the low it entirely, even if you, unless you really want that scope, but again, if you're, even with the slower time to the min spread, this actually I didn't mention this, the MG9 is 17 has horrendous time to the min spread, like, it takes forever. Like, it took, I think it would honestly take like over a second to become decently accurate again, which is not usable. Yes, you will probably kill people with it, but only if they're terrible or you're just you're just lucking out at that point. You're not using something consistent. It's not consistent enough. Just use something like the lowest gun if you're running and gunning. But again, for that epic bipod all range play, well, except close range, yeah, that's excellent. So the MG917 suppressive is the B tier option to me. It's also an excellent weapon to kill planes at long range because it actually shares the same projectile as the Bene Mercy. Moving on, something that used to be a common affair but isn't that common anymore, wrongly accused of being over par, is the Parabellum Low Weight. Now this is also another B tier weapon but it's definitely not more than that and the only reason, it's actually a very specific weapon, it's kind of like a defensive aggressive weapon sort of. The biggest problem with this weapon, well let's start with this, the positives actually, it's fired to 700 RPM with a big magazine, that's very powerful. Like it does it for damage, actually has the best theoretical DPS tied with the Burton up to 12 meters, though the Burton actually shatters it like up to 22 meters, but the Burton just, just outshoots everything uh, at, in that range bracket. Regardless, it actually has pretty... The Hepfire is actually not great, it's the same as the LMG-08, but since it has very high target saturation, you can shred people at close wheel with the Hepfire. Though, personally, I've been able to kill them, like, even... Uh, not spitting distance, but close range, just strafing out with the Hewitt's hip fire, and especially the BAR trench, for example. Uh, it's very, very, very good at tap firing because it's a low weight and it has a high rate of fire. I actually have a clip of this, I think, on the screen. I may not, but hopefully I will. Yeah, but the biggest problem it just recoils way too much, and do not listen to people who can who say, "Oh, you can just control the recoil," because all you can control is the vertical recon, and the problem with the MG, the LMG08, no, the Parabellum, is it just has atrocious horizontal recoil. It's just double the horizontal recoil of the LMG08. In the most in most situations, the low weight LMG08 is better. Hence, why the LMG08 is ranked A. Probably one of the biggest differences in terms of variant is the suppressive version. The suppressive version on the Parabellum is completely garbage. It does absolutely nothing better statistically except that it has a scope. And that's actually a horrible thing to have on something that has the horizontal recoil of like 10 Hewitts. <laughs> so just don't bother unless you really, really, really need the scope. Moving on to the Perino, let's start with the low wave variant. The Perino is actually a very underrated weapon. I think uh, I would... I would uh, I'm almost tempted to say A tier, but not really because it's not great in most situations, but it's great at specific situations, but I, I would say it's more versatile than the MG917 because it has, it actually has extremely, extremely, extremely low horizontal recoil, like it's almost better to hew it, and more, or should I say more importantly, I'm not sure, but a very, very nice factor is that it has the lowest vertical recoil of any LMG by quite a bit, at 0.02. Uh, 
It's a very great defensive weapon, especially if you're not engaging at extreme long ranges. Like, within the medium range, especially since it suffers from fairly low velocity compared to other LMGs, it also has the lowest gun projectile where, and the hero is by extension, where you will need to hit body shots at 50 meters to get the 5 hit kill. But honestly, even if you're not doing that, the accuracy makes up for it. Like, even the time to, for a weapon of this caliber, it actually has pretty good time to min spread as well. The recoil pair is non existent, the spread is pretty good. Actually, very, very good. It's the same as the Hewitt. Not ignoring the time to min spread, as I said earlier, it's still a heavy, pretty heavy gun. Like, on the heavier. It's kind of like, it kind of bridges the gap between the MG1970 and the Lewis gun, I feel. It has a very nice niche, and you can do extremely well with it, especially in defensive situations. But if the need calls for it, you can actually get up with it and actually fight decently, which you simply cannot do with the MG1917 in general. It also has the very interesting uh, reload system, which lets you top up rounds very quickly. Now, I find this very useful personally, but you could make an argument. For example, the MG MG15 just does that system better because it has 100 rounds and reloads quickly, as does the Lewis gun, which is the suppressive version. But the Perino simply has other qualities. Also, something I forgot to mention, which uh, the MG917 actually has the best um, time to overheat, as does the Perino. Those guns are actually the same at 65 rounds, which is a huge amount of ammunition to be fired. Like you could fire for like eight seconds or something straight. And that can be very, very useful even suppressing like a corridor, so enemies don't go in and your team can actually go in. I use this a lot on Monte Grappa, for example. But yeah, I would recommend the Perino, it's very underrated, it's very fun to use and it's a very cool looking weapon. Uh, other disadvantage uh, compared to other LMGs is, or LMGs probably stretching it with the Perino, but whatever. It actually takes very, very long to equip, like 2.2 seconds, whereas all the other LMGs are below 1 second or, or close to that. I don't remember exactly, but it's very odd. But you get used to it. Now, last but absolutely least is the Perino Defensive. This is another example of a completely used variant, just like the suppressive uh, version of the Parabellum. It has literally no advantage. You actually have slower ADS time, not as bad as the suppressive because it has an optical side, not a telescope or scope or whatever. But just do not use it unless you just want the higher uh, clarity, which is still not great because actually a deficiency of the Perino is that it has a giant, like, what do you call it? Uh, range finder, I forgot what it's called, on the, on the side, so it, it looks quite chunky anyway. I actually don't mind it that much because the actual eyesight is quite nice. Again, just avoid the defensive variant on the Perino. It has no purpose, like, at all. It has it comes with the tripod for some reason, but it has no actual function. So that's about it for the list. Uh, this actually was quite a difficult video to make, even though it's pretty, pretty unscripted. I think I'm pretty happy with the final result now, even probably can you can hear my dog whine in the background a bit uh, in the instance, so I apologize for that, but I just cannot be bothered to record this one like the sixth time. It was really, really surprisingly difficult this time around, because I had so many audio problems, I wasn't happy with the commentary, and there goes my dog, <laughs> as mentioned on Q. I hope you enjoyed this very, very long video, I think it's going to be over an hour. But that is my tier list. If you want to rank your own tier list, feel free to take my template and post it on Twitter or whatever. But this is my list, it's based on some objective facts, as I like to do, but it's ultimately my personal preference. Sort of, because like something like the LMG08 I barely use, but be that as it may, I recognize a good gun when I see it, even though it may not be my favorite. I hope you have a great day and stay safe out there. Damn it again, signing off.